What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a quick repair on my 2023 F350 build that I'm currently working on. Now I did just install an eight inch striker lift kit on my truck, but during the install, I'm not sure exactly how, I thought I took all the proper precautions, but I must have somehow damaged a sensor on my truck because now it's throwing all kinds of codes. So I went to my local auto parts store and I had them hook up their diagnosing tool to my truck and we found out it was pulling a code C0034, which is part of the ABS system that refers to the front right wheel speed sensor. So after I found out which sensor it was, I ended up going online and comparing a couple of different prices. But the easiest thing I found for me, which I just called my local Ford dealership, and I had them look up the wheel speed sensor for the front right wheel. They ordered it, I had it in less than a week, and I went and picked it up today. But before we get into the install, let me show you the fault codes that are on my dash, and then after the install, we should be able to have them all go away. So let's jump in, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's go inside, and you'll hear all of the faults going off. So here we go here. Service advanced track, check brake system, tire pressure monitor fault, hill descent control fault, parking brake limited function service required, hill start assist not available, pre-collision assist not available. So once you go ahead and clear them all out by hitting your OK button, they do all go away. But then as soon as you shut the truck off and turn it back on, they pop all back up again. So I'm hoping that once I change the wheel speed sensor, all of those lights should go away. Now real quick, according to my local dealership, having them change my wheel speed sensor was gonna be probably close to $400. But it only cost me around $90, which is this part right here. As you can see right there, 85, 81. And this, is basically all it is. This harness right here connects at the top. Here is your wire that gets plugged in along the frame. That right there is your wheel speed sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and set that over there for now. Okay, now the wheel speed sensor on this side is this cable right here, okay? It goes up under here, plugs in pretty much right underneath of your rotor. So we are gonna to have to take the wheel, the brake caliber, and the rotor off to get to that sensor. But as you can see here, the sensor just kind of connects along the way, and then it goes right up under here, and then pretty much right underneath your battery, there's a harness that it plugs into. Now, before you do this, I highly recommend disconnect your batteries. Because again, I'm not sure how I damaged this wheel sensor. When I went ahead and did the lift kit, I did disconnect my brake lines, to make sure I had slack in the line so that when I dropped the axle to put the coils on, I wasn't damaging anything. But somehow, some way, I have no idea how, I ended up damaging the sensor. So I'm gonna disconnect both batteries, take all that off, and we're gonna swap out that sensor today. So let me go ahead and start doing that, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So I went ahead and I got the wheel taken off. I did go ahead and remove the brake caliber. Now on this larger, F350, there are four large bolts on the back of your brake caliber here. There's two at the top, and then there's two more down at the bottom. So once you take all four of those out, and they will probably have some factory Loctite on them. So if you have to use a breaker bar to break the bolts loose, I believe I was just using a 21 mil socket here to take those off. Then you wanna make sure you bungee cord it, strap it out of the way, just so it's not hanging and pulling on your brake line. Then you wanna make sure you remove your rotor. So on mine, it's already loose because again, it's a brand new truck. It shouldn't be rusted up and seized out yet. But if your rotor is a little bit hard to get off, it's a little bit seized on there, you can just go ahead and take a rubber mallet and just hit the outside of your rotor here. You can hit this part right here. You never wanna hit this part here on either side. Okay, so there we go. So this right here is our sensor. Now, has all this, it looks like it just has some dirty grease here to probably protect the sensor a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Once you put the new sensor back on, you know, if you wanna put a little bit of grease around there, maybe to help protect it, you can. But that right there is your wheel speed sensor. So all you have to do here is take a little Allen wrench here, remove this bolt here, and then that should just pull out and then unplug it all the way up. So let me start working on that real quick and I'll show you an update here in a minute. So I'll be right back. 
Okay, so we went ahead and I unbolted the sensor here. And then all you gotta do is lift this little metal tab, just bend it up a little bit, and then you can actually pull the sensor out from behind it, just like this, okay? And then you wanna make sure that you just cut those zip ties on that little fastener right there. And then again, disconnect it all the way up. Now I did go ahead and take my, my wheel well liner out, which is sitting over here. You probably don't need to take the whole liner out. I wanted to be able to show you where exactly your wheel speed sensor connects to. So, because it is directly above your wheel well liner and it's a little hard to get to. So I would say, honestly, if you just take the wheel well liner out, then behind the liner is this fiberglass liner here, probably for heat protection and everything else. But if you just go ahead and pull the fiberglass liner to, from the front of the vehicle down, you can see right here is where your wheel speed sensor connects to, right here, this little red tab. That's where your wheel speed connector is connected to. And it's just sitting up here above your wheel well liner. And this little plug here is just plugged into to this part right here where my finger is. So it's pretty much just right above the wheel well liner. So all you gotta do is pull this red tab out, disconnect your wheel speed sensor harness. And then we're gonna go back in with the new speed sensor plug it back in down here, fish it all the way up, and then we're gonna reconnect it towards the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and try to turn the truck on and see what happens. So let me keep working on that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I got the sensor connected back up to the bottom here behind the rotor. I went ahead and fished it up along the existing brake line. And then I went up above and I connected it to the harness above the liner here. I then went ahead and put my rotor back on and I put my brake caliber back on. Now for now, I only put two bolts in the brake caliber for now just to hold it in place because now that everything is back together, I wanna to go back up, connect the batteries, and then we're gonna go inside and turn the key on just to see if any of those fault codes go away automatically. So I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we went ahead and we got both of the batteries reconnected. Let's go inside the truck. Turn the key on and see what happens. So let's see, vehicle on, that's normal. Door ajar, that was normal. Hood ajar, that's normal. Tire pressure monitor fault, okay, not a big deal. These are aftermarket wheels, we'll have to check on that. So it looks like all of the other sensors are off. So it looks like right now the only fault is going to be the tire pressure monitoring system. Now these are aftermarket wheels, so if there is a problem with the tire pressure monitoring system valves that were put into these aftermarket tires, I'll have to look into that. But so far, all of those fault codes were fixed by just replacing the front wheel sensor, which was very simple just to do it yourself. So let's go ahead and shut this off. All I have to do now is come back under here, put the secondary bolts in my caliber, tighten all that down. I'm going to go back through to make sure all of my harnesses are attached. Then I got to go ahead and put my wheel well liner back on, put the wheel back on, and then we should be good to go. So let me do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. We got everything put back together. I have the wheel speed sensor all attached and zip tied to where it needs to go. I got my wheel well liner back installed. I got my brake caliber back installed. So we're pretty much good to go. Let me go ahead and get my wheel put back on, get that tightened down. We'll get it off the jacks and we're gonna go take this for a quick spin. So I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we are all done. We got everything all hooked up nice and tight and everything's strapped down and ready to go. So let's go ahead and hop in the truck and take it for a quick ride. Put my seatbelt on. All right, let's see here. Tire pressure sensor fault. Let's just see how this goes here after we drive it around the block for a little bit. But that seems to be the only code that's popping up. But again, as you can see here, no other sensors are going off, so that's always good. So let's go ahead, take it for a quick spin. So far, so good. No other sensors are going off. I mean, it's crazy. Once you actually have a bad wheel speed sensor, it, it's amazing how many other sensors that fault just because of a wheel speed sensor. I mean, as you've seen earlier, there were several different sensor faults going off 
just because of the wheel speed sensor. So again, I'm just driving around the block a little bit just to let the rotation of my larger wheels drive a little bit to let these sensors kind of pick up any information that they're looking for. Let's pull back in the driveway here. So as you can see here, no other faults are showing up on the dash except the tire pressure monitor. Okay, just a quick update. So after driving around the block one more time, all of my wheel sensors started working and the tire pressure monitor system light went off. So, so far everything's good to go. So at the end of the day, it was that wheel sensor that was causing all of the problems. Okay, everybody, so we are finally done. We went ahead and replaced the front right wheel speed sensor on my 2023 F350. Again, I don't know how the original one broke. I tried to be as careful as I could when I was putting the lift kit on. When I took the old sensor off, I didn't see any problems with it. But hey, at the end of the day, these are just cheap electronics that they're putting on these vehicles and at any time they could break. But as I just showed you today, it's very simple and easy to replace and you will save a ton of money by doing it yourself. But that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you. I really appreciate all of the support. And as always, see you in the next video.